Hello, and welcome to As Built, the podcast from Graphic Machine about architecture firms and buildings and how both get built. I'm your co-host, Patience Jones. With me, as ever, is your other co-host, Brian Jones. Thank you for joining us. Today is an episode of Tech Stack Cookie Updates. It's, there's really no secret about what this episode is about. Not chocolate chip. Nope. No, sadly. Only. Yes. These are instead the little pieces of information that get placed on websites. And when you visit those websites, they follow you around and collect everything about you and everywhere you go and potentially emails that you read. And they basically, it's like having an entourage that you can't see and don't pay for. What is the update with cookies? So about four years ago, Google made an announcement that this was going to be phased out, that these cookies would no longer be um, something that they would support. And they had gone through various browser updates, and there was a lot of pushback from the advertising community that there wasn't an alternative that worked and that didn't create more problems. And about a couple of weeks ago, this was firmly announced that they are abandoning the plans to abandon the cookies. So the cookies are here to stay for some period of time into the future, at least for now. So when Google made this announcement that they were going to abandon what they referred to it as third-party cookies, it caused ripples of panic among advertisers and marketers and brands and companies because, to your point, there wasn't an immediately identifiable, easy, good way to get all of that information about everybody online to be able to know who's interested in buying your stuff. Yep. Um, so this begat a lot of really creative endeavors to try to find legal ways to engage people. And the push became... Uh, what they called first party data, which is don't rely on Google and its cookies to give you information. You go out and get the information. And you do that through emails and e-newsletters and putting content on your site that makes people want to sign up for things and lots of other approaches. So now companies have invested a lot in doing this. And now Google says, actually, we're going to allow you to keep having cookies. But in the interim, lots of customers and prospects have also heard about this and have really come to value more of the attempts to get first party data because they feel like they have a connection with the company. And they're doing it willingly. Yes. Yep. Which is very different than... You know, we've all done it. You go to some website and you're looking at a pair of shoes and then, you know, two days later you get an email about the pair of shoes. You go on another website, you know, and there's an ad for the same shoes that you were looking at. So people now have a better understanding of how that is done and what's not to like about it. So now that Google has said, well, we're going to allow this to keep happening. What should brands do? Continue on the march to gather first party cookie, first party data. Like, it's great that this is still going to be something that you can continue to keep in your arsenal uh, of, of tricks that you can use to attract new prospects, but still go towards first party. It's just better. Absolutely. And you'll own the relationship. That's the thing. It's like, yeah. Relying on an external platform that can change its course at a moment's notice is really not great for your business long term because it's just putting too many too many eggs in somebody else's control. Well, and I think Never. it falls into the the make different mistakes bucket. Yeah. When people were faced with, oh, Google's taking this tool away that we rely on to be able to sell things. Okay. You know, that happened and it it wasn't your fault as a brand, but you saw what could happen. So don't let yourself be in that position again. Yeah. You know, use it as a tool, but don't make it your everything. 
And just because Google decided that this is their position now doesn't mean that some other entity won't come in later and say, well, too bad, you still have to get rid of them. So it it's really, really important to continue on this very systematic but consistent march towards first-party data. And the first-party data actually tends to yield better results anyway because it's more direct information about real people. It's not extrapolation based on a sample-sized group. Um, it's just, it's better all around. It is more work, for sure, but it pays off. So, And you'll own more of a relationship with your prospects, which is pretty valuable. Yes. And people have become more savvy about cookies. And so they're starting to, when they're presented with a little, you know, do you want to have the cookies on? Do you not? Um, there was actually an article about how brands can tell if a person is in Europe or if they're in the United States by whether they accept or reject the cookies. Because men in the United States are sort of at one end of the spectrum and tend to just accept whatever they're like, fine, accept, like they just want to get through to get to the content. At the other end of the spectrum are women in Europe who will take the time to go through and uncheck all of the boxes, reject the cookies, confirm my preferences. And so brands now make assumptions on both the gender and the location of somebody based on whether or not they accept those cookies. And I don't think that will continue. I think that over time, we're going to see more people going through and unchecking the boxes and rejecting the cookies, which has the net effect of them not being offered in the first place. I don't know. I feel like don't underestimate people's willingness to have a quick fix when they're frustrated. I think that's what happens, though. I am definitely like the Swedish woman or what have you, because I am like, no, no, uncheck, uncheck, do not track, do not, you know. Realistically, I can't prove whether that does anything or not. And maybe this is all just folly and it's to make me feel better. But I I accept that I have my own digital entourage no matter what I do. It is sort of becoming the thing that people get, just like people get fed up with junk mail. You know, they're going to get fed up with this too. And it behooves firms to be in a better position when that happens that they've already got these things in place where they're getting to know their customers and their prospects and their audiences. Except all. And you're always saying like, oh, I got this really cool Instagram thing, you know, targeted at me. And like, oh, I didn't see any of that. So if you want to see the cool stuff, I guess, except all the cookies. I don't know. The moral of the story here. <laughs> Move to Europe. Thank you for joining us. We hope that this has been um, educational and not left you wanting actual cookies, which I quite do right now. So we're going to sign off. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye.